Hey everybody, welcome back to the Introductory Astronomy Lab. This week we're going to be talking about the concept of refraction, or the ability of a material to bend and kind of slow down, or actually to slow down light as it passes from a less dense medium to a more dense medium. So, in this lab we're going to use a prism as our example. Alright, and this is an equilateral triangle prism, like that. All the angles in here are 60 degrees. Alright. And that'll come in, that'll come in handy later. Now, refraction is essentially when you have a beam of light, we'll draw it as a red beam because we're gonna be using a red laser beam later. When you have an incoming laser beam, when it hits this surface here between the air and the, let's say, glass or acrylic, the air is a less dense medium than the glass. And what that's going to do is it's going to slow the light down depending on its wavelength. Shorter wavelengths are going to be slowed down more or bent more than longer wavelengths. So blue light will have more of a, a larger angle of refraction than red light. So for instance, when you make contact with this boundary, it's going to bend the light like that, slow down as it goes through the glass, and then it'll refract again as it's coming out of the glass. Now, how do we measure this? How do we quantify this? Well, there's two equations that we're gonna go over, which are important to this. The first, and I'm gonna draw another diagram, is Snell's Law. Now, Snell's Law is like a general refraction equation. Um, basically, it's for when it transfers from one medium to the other, so if you have say whatever this is, let's say it's glass, and this is air. So air and glass, all right? And you have a light beam that's inbound towards this piece of glass, all right? We have what's called an angle of incidence, which is measured from the perpendicular to the surface, or what's called the normal to the surface. So that's our angle of incidence. And we're also going to draw this perpendicular on the other side because we're still going to measure the refracted angle with respect to that perpendicular. Whoops. So let's say our light beam is going from a less dense medium to a more dense, so it's going to be bent towards the horizontal or towards the horizontal or towards the normal. All right. And then our angle of refraction is right here. And as you can see, your angle of incidence is going to be larger than your angle of refraction. Now, if you were to reverse this, if you were to come, if you were to come through the glass and then into the air, it would be the opposite. You'd start with a smaller angle and get a larger one because it's going to a less dense medium, it means it's going to travel faster and be bent away from the perpendicular or the uh, the normal. All right, so that's our general setup. Now with each material, we also have an index of refraction. So I'll call this N of air and N of glass. All right, and basically that's a property of the material that allows you to calculate the angle of refraction. It's based upon the molecular structure of the material and um, it's gonna vary for each one. Like for instance, air is one, glass is anywhere from 1.2 to 1.5. In our lab, our prism is gonna be made out of acrylic and you should get something close to this when we go to find it. We're gonna be doing this in our lab. So now, how do you use these equations? Well, there's a simple equation, which isn't too bad. Just erase that. It's called Snell's Law. All right, and briefly, it states that the index of refraction of the first material or the incident material times the sine of the angle of incidence which was that first angle that we talked about is equal to the index of refraction or the index of refraction of the second material times the sine of the angle of refraction and basically we can plug this in we measure this plug this in and we can calculate um, our angle of refraction all right, there's another concept that we need to go over before we get into the actual, what we're gonna be doing in the lab. 
and this one is specific to prisms. So you're not really going to use this outside of um, a prism, but we need it in order to use Snell's Law in this case. All right, so when you have a prism like this, all right, and you shine a laser in it or any sort of light source, you don't just def uh, refract the light once, you refract it twice when it makes the transition from air to acrylic and then from acrylic to air. So you can't just use Snell's Law directly because it's, it's not going to be the same. So what you have to find is the angle of max deviation. And essentially what that is so for instance, let's say we, reflect, re, we refract our light so it's parallel. The, I'll, I'll try to get the lesson out. And then it refracts again right here. All right. So essentially you had an incoming beam of light, refracted, went parallel to the bottom, refracted again, went out that way. This is actually how we use, um, how we use the lenses and telescopes. We essentially redirect the light so that it comes in the objective, is refracted to a center point based on using a convex lens and then that's collected into an eyepiece, magnified and delivered to your eye. So these are the direct principles that we use in order to make our refracting telescopes work. Now, how do you find the angle of max deviation? Well, what you want to do is you want to, basically the angle of max deviation is the angle that the light actually changed. All right, technically there's an angle in here with regards to the normal, and there's an angle here with regards to the normal, but in this case, we just want to know what the max angle that the light changed from its initial angle to its new angle. So you basically extend the light beam up as if it never refracted, like that, okay? And you extend the light beam back as if it originally came from this angle. And you want to calculate this angle in here, and we're going to call it D for the angle of max deviation. Now. If you don't make sure that this is the laser light is perfectly parallel to the bottom of the prism, there's a very long equation. Um, I put it in the lab report or in the lab manual that you can use if you can't get it to be perfectly parallel to the bottom, um, but you should be able to. It's not that bad. It may take some kind of playing with it a little bit. But if you make sure it's parallel, the equation for this really simplifies. And what you want to do, what this equation does, is um, it allows you to calculate the index of refraction of the material, which is pretty cool. So, the equation is the index of refraction at a specific wavelength of light. You can only use this for one wavelength of light. In our case, um, we're using red, which is about somewhere between 650 and 700 nanometers. So, we're set we have our one wavelength. That is equal to the sine of A plus D over two over the sine of A over two. All right, now D is just the angle that you're gonna measure. All right, so when you do your report, take your prism off after you draw your lines. Draw those lines out. I would trace the prism first, all right? So you have that there for you. And then I would just measure this angle, all right? So that'll, that'll give you D, this angle between these two lines right there. A, in this case, it's, uh, it's just the angle of the top of the prism, all right? That's angle A. In this case, since it's an equilateral triangle, A is always gonna be equal to 60 degrees, all right? So you basically plug that into your calculator and you're gonna get N lambda, some value maybe 1.5. That's a really bad thought. Let me rewrite that. Should be in that neighborhood. As long as you're not getting under 1 and over 2, um, it's not an exact science. It's not going to be that big a deal. But it should be in the neighborhood of 1.5. All right, so what are we going to do for the lab? All right, so first, first, let me erase this. first thing we're going to do is put our prism down, right? 
just like that. Here's our triangular prism. I would trace the outline of the prism. I mean, you're going to have to anyway, uh, just because of the assignment. And I'm going to write on the board everything that you should have in your paper. Okay. So basically, you want to write this down, take a picture of it, submit it for the lab assessment. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you have your laser over here. You want to select a point where the laser starts, shine the laser so it goes through the prism parallel to the bottom and out the other side. Okay. And what you want to do is draw a dot here and here and here and just hold your hand up, kind of get the laser, and draw a dot here. Then we want to trace the line of the laser, all right, the path of the laser. So that's the actual path that the laser took as it went through the prism. Next up, we want to draw our perpendiculars to the surface. So there's our first normal, second normal, third normal, and fourth. When you do your report, draw it a little larger. Um, just take up an 8 by 11 sheet of paper. It's going to get a bit crowded on the board, but I think you'll know what I mean. Um, the first thing that we want to do is label the angle of incidence, all right? And we want to measure that. So on the side of your on the side of your paper, you want to have angle of incidence one. Give a value. Label your label your angle of refraction one as well, and we're going to have to calculate that using Snell's law. All right, just put it over here. You can go ahead and label A as well. All right, just put angle A is equal to 60 degrees. We know that right off the bat. Then we want to draw our, let's use, let's use green. Let's see if green works. We draw our laser as if it never stopped. All right, and draw it as if it went from there to there. Measure this angle. I know it looks like it's 90 degrees in this case. It may turn out to be that, but I'm not just going to go ahead and say that. Label that angle D and say angle D is equal to some value. All right. You're going to have to measure this one, so I'll put an M by the ones you're going to have to measure. Well, not when you're going to calculate. All right. Then when the light comes out of the prism, we want to measure this angle and have it labeled. This is the angle of refraction, remember, because it's incident here and refracted here. So this is the angle of refraction to. We can measure that directly. All right, so theta r2, we don't know it, we're gonna measure it. And then we wanna find theta incidence two. All right, and for that, we're gonna have to calculate it, okay? and the index of refraction from using the uh, angle of largest deviation equation, so. Oops. Okay. All right, so we wanna measure our angle of incidence, measure our angle of largest deviation, measure our angle of refraction, the second one, and uh, then we're gonna calculate the rest. Now, how do you calculate Snell's law? Well, once we calculate this, all right, we measured that, we can just go back, and I'll switch to black really fast. And this is what it should look like, all right? And you should have all your calculations on one sheet of paper. Make sure it's nice and neat. It shortens the lab report up, makes it easier for you guys. All right, so we're gonna have, and we'll call it air, sine of theta incidence one is equal to n that we calculated here. Sine of theta r1. All right, now we want to solve for this. So air is 1, so we just plug that in. Sine of the angle of incidence, let's say, let's just pick a random number. Let's say sine 45. All right, is equal to 1.5 sine of theta refracted 1. All right, sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, so root 2 over 2 is equal to 1.5 sine of r1. I'm going to get rid of my laser here. All right, 
I'm going to change 1.5 to 3 over 2. So it's root 2 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2 sine of refracted 1. Multiply both sides by 2 over 3. 2's cancel. Root 2 over 3 is equal to sine of theta r1. We want to take the r arc sine of that and the inverse, and we're going to get theta r1. All right, whatever that angle actually is. I think it's actually just basing it off the top of my head. Looks like it's about 60 degrees, now that I think of it. So that's essentially what you're going to do for the first angle, all right, the first refracted angle. You're going to go back and you're going to go do it for the second incidence angle. So instead of doing it like this, you're going to plug this in, plug that in, plug that in, and then solve for this. Same process, just different side. All right. So all of your calculations should be laid out like this. You should have a kind of a side panel of all your values. And you should have a nice, neatly labeled diagram with everything that I, uh, that I broke right there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the, uh, for the refraction lab. If you have any questions, you can email me as always. Um, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And good luck, guys. Have fun.